Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a quick and fun functional equation. We have a function from reals to reals and we're going to be solving for f of x. f of x minus y is equal to f of x times f of y. Alright, so you know with functional equations there's a lot of different ways but one of the very common methods is replacing x and y with certain values such as 1 or 0 and in some cases we set y equal to x so on and so forth so here's what we're gonna here's what we're gonna do first I'm going to replace y with 0 and from here I'm getting something interesting because first of all on the left hand side I'm gonna end up with f of x and on the right hand side I have f of x as well times now we don't know what y is or f of y is but we can replace y with 0 and that's going to give us f of 0 obviously we don't know what f of 0 is at this point but let's go ahead and put everything on the same side do not cancel out anything that would be a mistake but instead subtract this expression from both sides and then factor that's basically how we solve equations like you know these and when I take out f of x I should be getting 1 minus f of 0 equals 0 now we have a product which is pretty good now if the product of two or more things is 0 then each factor can be set equal to 0 so from the first one f of x equals 0 which is basically the 0 function like maps everything to 0 that will be a solution and you can easily see that because if f of x is equal to 0, f of x minus y is going to be 0. So you're going to have 0 equals 0 times 0. So that's definitely a solution. But are there other solutions? Let's go ahead and find out. If this is not the case, so we can say either this or this must be true. One of them has to be true. And from here we get f of 0 equals 1. Now you have to think about it this way though. This doesn't have to be true if f of x is equal to 0. We don't have to have f of 0 equals 1. But let's just keep that in mind. Now, here's what we're going to do to make sure that we are always getting f of 0 equals 1. I'm going to suppose that, suppose f of x, we know that f of x equals 0 is a solution. We got it out of the way. But right now, suppose that f of x does not equal 0. What does that imply? Then we have to have f of 0 equals 1 because one of these had to happen, remember? Okay. Now, in this case, we can proceed as follows. Now, remember our original equation was f of x minus y equals f of x times f of y. This is for all real numbers. And then now we're going to replace y with x. Remember, I was telling you about this method earlier. Now, if you replace y with x, it's good because on the left-hand side, you get f of 0. Great. And on the right-hand side, you get f of x times f of x, which is f of x quantity squared. Awesome. Now, what is so good about this? Because we do know that if f of x does not equal 0, then f of 0 has to equal 1. So we know that this is equal to 1. Great. So this is equal to 1. What does that imply? It implies two things. Either f of x is equal to 1 or f of x is equal to negative 1. And again, these conditions are satisfied if f of x does not equal 0. Of course, they, these two cannot happen at the same time. So these can be solutions too, right? Then do we have three solutions? f of x can equal any one of these. There's no variables, it's just constants. Well, here's the thing. If you go back to the original equation right here, right, and replace f of x with 1 on both sides, you're going to get 1 equals 1 times 1. So this looks good. But on the right-hand side, if you replace f of x with negative 1, f of x minus y is going to be negative 1. On the right-hand side, you're going to have negative 1 times negative 1 coming from f of x and f of y. But obviously, this is not true. Therefore, f of x equals negative 1 is not going to be a solution. But f of x equals 1 is going to be a solution. And these are going to be the only solutions. So we basically have 
two solutions to this equation. Let's sum it up. Either f of x is equal to 0 or f of x is equal to 1. So those are going to be the only solutions to this functional equation. Are there any other solutions? Go ahead and let me know if you find any other ones. I know you guys always come up with amazing solutions, something uh, that I haven't thought about. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.